Amen. Praise the Lord. Take your Bibles, if you would, and turn to the book of John. John in chapter number 14. As we continue through the book of John on Sunday morning. John in chapter number 14. And uh, this is probably one of the most well, well-known passages in John, other than John, of course, chapter 3. This is one of the most well-known passages in John, and, uh, and it's well-known for a reason. And it's very clear, and I think there's some things that uh, will, be, will be benefit to us in understanding uh, really what Jesus is saying, and why he's saying, and who's, who he's saying it to. And uh, so John chapter number 14, beginning in verse number 1, stand together with me please for the reading of God's word, to honor the word of God this morning. The Bible says, John chapter 14, beginning in verse number 1, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And receive you unto myself, that where I am there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we, not, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Ye have known me, if ye have known me, ye should have known my Father also. From henceforth ye know him, and, ye, and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long a time with you, and yet thou hast not known me? Philip, he that hath seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Lord, I pray that you'd help us as we look at this portion of Scripture, Lord, that you might give us illumination, you might give us understanding. And uh, Lord, that you might uh, help us to see what specifically is to be learned here today, Lord, and how precise the teaching is, how necessary it is, Lord, and how damaging it could be if, uh, if it was deviated from. And Lord, so I pray that our hearts would be ready to be open and we would be willing to hear. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. you. May be seated. We've been going through the book of John. We've seen these incredible uh, events that have taken place, and and uh, from the raising of Lazarus and and uh, the triumphal entry into Jerusalem, and then the washing of the disciples' feet, and then of course uh, Judas, uh, Jesus telling him, telling him what thou hast to do, go and do quickly, and uh, how important it is for us to understand that uh, Jesus is coming to the place. He says, "Now is the hour come where the Son of Man will be glorified." Now is the hour come, and he was troubled in his spirit, and ultimately he will be led to the Garden of Gethsemane, where he will say, uh, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. And it's so important for us to understand that this is critical, and when we are looking at uh, why do we even believe? Why do we even believe in the Scripture? Why, do we, why are we even here? You know, there's a lot of the places we could be this morning. There's a lot of other places I could be this morning, apparently not you. I mean, I could be uh, out, out picnicking today, I could be out uh, at the beach, I could be uh, fish, fishing, or I could be playing golf. <laughs> yeah, I could be playing golf, that would be awesome. Yeah, but why? Why would, I, why would I be here? You know, why, why such passion? Can you understand the reality of this, though? Sometimes in America, we have this concept that the world is becoming more secular. It's only because we don't see very far across the world. We see what is happening in our specific mix and mist, and really there are some some of our country that's becoming more secular. But can I tell you, most of the world thinks about things on a spiritual level. Most of the world engages on a spiritual level, and there is this kind of overriding concept of the world that the world believes in God. Or can I say the world believes in a God? Amen. Right? The world believes in, uh, believes in a God. And even in our country, you can believe in a God. They don't, people don't really, aren't really concerned about whether you believe in a God. And uh, you, you, you can have a moment of silence and you can even pray. You, you know when things start getting a little bit hectic? is when you mention the name Jesus. When you mention the name Jesus. 
Why is it that the name Jesus uh, is such a, a firecracker in, in the emotion of, of, uh, of the social and religious environment? Why is it that way? Well, because it is understood that Jesus is not a God. Jesus is the God. And Jesus is not a way. Jesus is the way. And this is what Jesus says. I, I love it that Jesus uses the word, so I don't have to say it. Hey, you believe in God. C we could say that to most people. Uh, listen, there are a few people that do not believe in uh, an invisible, all-knowing, personal God, uh, that, but they just be believe in a different God. That God is the God that looks them back in the mirror. Okay? Everybody believes in a God of some sort. Okay? The Bible says in Proverbs, the fool has said in his heart there is no God. The Bible says in James chapter 2 and verse number 19, Thou believest a God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Listen, the world believes in God. Uh, the world believes in a God. And uh, Jesus says to the Jew, to, for, even for the Jew uh, that believes in Jehovah God, uh, and Jesus is telling them, you believe in God. Listen, that is awesome. That is wonderful. That is great. If you believe in God, believe also in me. Believe in me. See, you, we have to understand this. And I know I've mentioned this, but it is so critical to understand that the reason that it is necessary for Christ to come down to man is because man in his condition, in his human condition, is broken. Man is broken. Man is sinful. Man is wayward. There is none that seeketh after good. Everyone seeketh after their own. There is none that doeth right. No, not one. There is a way that seemeth right unto death, but the ends are of... Are, there is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the ends are of are the ways of death. Man, by nature, is broken. You say, preacher, I'm not sure if I believe that. I believe in the overall goodness of man. Well, let me give you three reasons why I don't believe in the overall goodness of man. Number one. I am one. I am one. And I'm just going to tell you, I'm not overall, by nature, good. Do you know who I think of first? Me. It is an act of the will and obedience to the scripture to think of somebody else instead of thinking of myself. And sometimes it is an act of social pressure for me to think of somebody else other than myself. Yeah, you, you, you do something and you're thinking, oh, man, I got to do this. What are people going to think? But guess what I want to do in my own mind? Guess what I want to do in my own heart? I want to do what pleases me. Okay? I know that man is false because I am a man and I am false. I understand my, my natural reaction, even for, I, I taught 7th grade science, or 7th grade math, uh, for about 15 years. I taught 7th grade math, and I'd be on the board, and I'd hear talking, and I'd turn around and say, were you talking? And every child's natural response was, no. <laughs> when you were raising your children, did you say, now sit down, now everybody else is going to lie, so let me teach you how to do this. Of course not. Okay? We know our, our almost two-year-old, almost two-year-old, she did it again the other day when I was correcting her, getting on to her, I said, come here. And she started to walk in place, <laughs> saying, I'm conforming to what you want, even though I'm not accomplishing your desire. How do you teach a two-year-old to be that mischievous? You don't have to teach them. They are nat naturally false. Because sin has come into the world. And death by sin. For all have sinned. De death passed upon all men. For all, that, for all have sinned. And we are by nature false. I know that man is false because I am a man. Second of all, I know that man is false by just a simple, basic study of history. History is just a written down record of man being false. Man being false. And over and over again, societies and groups and, and, and countries uh, begin uh, and they start and there's such a sense of liberty and there's such a sense of, of freedom. And, and what does that society ultimately progress to? Progresses to tyranny. It progresses to anarchy. It progresses to me first. 
That's the nature of history. Okay, the, the, you read history, they're not all running around in wheat fields, passing around daisies, loving each other, are they? <laughs> of course not. It's wars and rumors of wars. Many of them in the guise of religion. Because they believe in a God. Man, historically, is false. Even the very science teaches us that things are not headed towards that which is better, but headed towards decay. The second law of thermodynamics, the law of entropy, it's things are headed towards decay. You don't believe that? Take out your wedding photo. <laughs> I'm just telling you. Things are not now what they used to be. That's the truth. Things are headed towards decay. In this body, in this world, things are, it, it's the very nature and creation reflects the nature of man. Nature is broken. Man is broken. And we are false by nature. My own individual heart tells me that. Uh, history tells me that. Science tells me that. My interaction with others tells me that. And I'll promise you the Bible tells me that. The Bible says uh, there is none that seek their own. There's none that, that go after righteousness. It says, uh, there, for we have all come short of the glory of God. Hey, we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. By nature, we are false. So we find ourselves in this predicament that we believe in a God. Universally, it's overwhelming still is the case. Uh, there, is, there is pockets of, of secularism and atheism, which is just, uh, just switching and putting man in, man in the place of God. But universally, you ask people if they believe in God, and they'll tell you yes. That's the case all over the world. He, he may go by a different name, and, 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 and trust me, they're not the same. But they believe in God. But unfortunately... Under, under the, the, the auspicism and the guise of, of all of that system, whether it is religious or humanist or secular, there is this idea that man, by his nature, can elevate himself to become like God. In the religions of the world, how do you gain a paradise? How do you gain heaven? By being good enough to get there. Well, how do you take something that is broken and make it good enough? Well, I know how you make something broken and make it good enough. You try to make it as fancy as possible. As fancy as possible. Listen, you can take your beat up old car, get a new paint job and tint the windows and get de decals and all sorts of stuff. If the motor doesn't work, guess what? It's not going. And man cannot elevate himself, man cannot advance himself. It, it, throughout Scripture they have tried it, have they not? All the way back in Genesis. They said, let us come together. We shall reach the Most High. We shall attain to the heavens. And they begin to build the Tower of Babel. And the concept that, that just elevation is going to make them like God is laughable. But it was also contrary to the God's desire so that they, that they might know him. And so he confounded their language. So that they would abandon the foolhardiness of thinking you can elevate God simply by going higher. How ridiculous is that? Well, preacher, we wouldn't do that nowadays. We just believe we can elevate ourselves to the, uh, the mind and the act of God by becoming smarter. And we heap to ourselves knowledge and heap to ourselves knowledge. Isn't it amazing that it seems like those that, that have gained knowledge after knowledge after knowledge, their life is not any better because of the knowledge. They still have the same problems you have. They still have the same problems I have. Sometimes it's compounded by their advanced knowledge. Now, I'm not minimizing gaining knowledge. But it is foolhardy to think that your advancement of knowledge is going to make you like God. Man is by nature broken. They cannot elevate themselves. Whether it is a path 
through some religious course, or it is a path through a humanist course, or it is a path through a secular course, or it is a path of a, a naturalist course. It doesn't matter. They all have this one thing in common. They believe in God, and they can become like Him. Or they believe they are God. And they elevate themselves by whatever means necessary or seemingly elevate themselves. And if they can't do it in this life, what do they say? I'll come back and do it in the next life. Certainly it's going to take several lives to ultimately be able to become like God. Okay? It, it, does, it doesn't work that way because that which is broken, can, that which is false, cannot by its own nature become true. So the only way for man who is broken, man who is false, to become true is not for man to elevate himself to God, but for God to come down and fix man. God comes down and fix man. And so everybody has this universal belief in God and believes they can elevate themselves to Him or to be like Him or to be good enough to be received by Him. Where in reality, they cannot fix themselves. They cannot do away with their own sin. They cannot forgive their own sin. I could never forgive your sin. I'm as guilty as you are. But God could come down to man. And God could become man. And God could bridge the gap between that which is false and that which is true. And God could pay the penalty perfect and sinless and without error and without sin. He could pay the penalty for the sin of all mankind. So when Jesus says, thou believe in God, he, he is speaking ultimately of a universal belief. Can I tell you, all of the peoples of, uh, of Scripture believed in God. The Romans believed in gods and, and, and the Philippines, uh, the, the the Philistines believed in gods, and, and all of the people of Scripture believed in. But there was one problem. They were not believing in Jehovah God who would send himself to earth. And Jesus said, you believe in God? <laughs> that's awesome. Hey, that's, that's super. But belief in God does not fix the problem of your sin. Belief in God does not change your life. Belief in God does not remedy the problem of, that you have of being guilty and false before the judge. He says, you believe in God? Believe also in me. Believe also in me. Later on, we'll see it. Philip says, well, if you just show us the Father, it would suffice us. Just show us God. I mean, that would be enough. And Jesus, I, I, what patience he has. He says, I have been with you this long and you still don't get it. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Jesus was not a God representative. Jesus was not a God's prophet. Jesus was not a God's teacher. Jesus was God come to earth as man, remaining and being God, very God, so that he might do for man what only God could. So when Jesus says, hey, you've seen the Father, if you've seen me, you have seen the Father, he's saying it is the overriding uh, theme of the book of John. Jesus, I am the light, I am the life, I am the bread, I am the I am. Jesus is saying, I am God. I have come to do what no man could do. Turn faults into truth. True, faults could never become true, but truth could come down and reveal truth so that we can be redeemed. It, all, it, goes, it goes back to the Garden of Eden. You say, preacher, you believe in that old story of the Garden of Eden? Amen. You bet I do. If you don't believe in that story, you might as well throw your Bible away. And that's where man rejected God. God said, listen, I have one command for you, not to eat of the uh, tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Of all the trees of the garden, thou shalt eat, but you cannot eat of this tree. And God would come down and fellowship with them, encourage them. And here's, here's the serpent, here's the devil who comes along and tempts Eve. He tempts her and says, hey, he tempts her in the same way that we're tempted, the lust of the eyes and the, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. He says, hath God said... 
The first thing the devil did was question the word of God. Hath God said? And when she saw that the tree was good to look upon and, and good to eat and, and would make one wise, she took of the fruit and she did eat. Eve was tricked. She was deceived. And the Bible says in uh, Genesis chapter 3, and she gave unto her husband with her. And here's Adam willfully rejecting the law of God right. on purpose. And God comes down and says something that he had not said. Adam, where art thou? It wasn't that God didn't know where Adam was. He was signifying the separation that had taken place. The separation. See, God is a triune being. God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He's one divine essence in three distinct parts. But can I tell you, that's how we were created. We were also created. The Bible says we are created in the image of God. When Adam was created, he was created with a body and a soul and a spirit. And God said, the day that you eat of that tree, you shall surely die. That day you'll die. Adam didn't fall over dead physically. Eve didn't fall over dead Physically, and though they were alive physically, and though they still had a, had a soul, a nephesh, the Hebrew word is, meaning it made them who they are, their personality, their individuality, they died in their spirit. That means they were separated in their connection with God. You know, the Bible says that I was born in trespasses and sin. I was born physically, and I was born with, with a physical part of my body. I was born with a soul, but I was born spiritually dead. I'm broken. And because of that brokenness, I live for myself. I think about myself. I'm selfish in, in, in nature. Even the very best things I do would be done because of cultural pressure. And that cultural pressure ultimately comes from knowledge of God's word that was given to us. But Jesus came down. And he came down to give life. Amen. What kind of life? The Bible says eternal life. Well, I already have physical life. And I'm already an individual. What life is he going to give me? He's going to give me spiritual life. He's going to reconcile me back to my connection with him. And that which is broken cannot fix. We cannot fix that which is broken. But he came down and offered us life. Jesus said, you believe in God? Believe also in me. Then he backs it up with the facts. In my father's house are many mansions. A lot of times people read this passage and they say, see, Jesus, after he died, he went back to heaven. He's like doing construction. You know, Jesus up there with a golden sledgehammer building you a mansion. It doesn't say that there will be many mansions. It says in my father's house are many mansions. Okay. God who created the world with a word doesn't need 2000 years of construction. Now, if he was trying to build something in Hernando County, I'm just kidding. There's no red tape in heaven, friend. No red tape. God is, listen, that wasn't the preparation. He wasn't saying, I'm going to go and prepare a place. I'm going to go and, and build you something in heaven. Heaven's already, heaven's already set, friend. He says, I'm about to go. My hour has come. I'm going to go prepare a place for you. How is he going to prepare his, uh, us a place in heaven? He's going to, sacri he's going to sub die substitutionary death sacrificially on the cross so that he might shed his blood so that I might have forgiveness of sin. So that I might... Be reconciled to God and be given spiritual and eternal life. He said, you believe in God? Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Because he is the God of truth. And I go to prepare a place for you. That where I am, there you will be likewise. Man, what a blessing. What a blessing that this place, this place that God has prepared uh, for us, heaven, uh, is a place where we will spend eternity. He said, you know the way. Whether I go, you know, and the way, you know. Don't you love Thomas? I love honest people. Okay? Listen, I'm going to tell you something about Thomas. Thomas was honest. In the good and the bad, Thomas was honest. You know, later on, he's going to say, I'm not going to believe unless I see Jesus said, here I am, Thomas. Okay, I believe. Yeah. 
He said, I can see Thomas. You know what other people would do? Jesus says, you know the way uh, where I go. You know the way. And the religious people are going, exactly. <clears throat> I know the way. You're just shaking your head and you have no clue. Thomas goes, Lord, I don't know the way. He said, Thomas said to him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. And how can we know the way? How can I, who am broken man, be reconciled and reunited for eternity with God? How can I know the way? And Jesus says the truth. She saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. You say, well, that's kind of an exclusive statement. Most certainly it is. Preacher, how come you think that, uh, how come you think that you have the only way to heaven? Listen, friend, I don't have a way to heaven. Jesus is the way to heaven. That is not exclusive to a church or exclusive to a, a denomination or exclusive to a religion. It's exclusive to God who sent Jesus to die on the cross for all mankind. But can you see what Jesus is saying? You believe in God? Believe also in me. Because I am the way, the truth and the, uh, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Is it possible to believe in God without believing in Jesus? Sure. You can believe in the concept of God. Name Him, whatever. You can believe in the concept of religion. But can I tell you? Belief in God simply is not the way. Believe that God came down to man. And died upon the cross. So that He could take your place and my place. Not only die for your sins, the Bible teaches die as, as your sins. He didn't just die for you, he became your sin. Became sin who knew no sin. God the Father, the Bible says in Isaiah 53, took, took the sin, the iniquity, and placed it upon him. It pleased him to bruise him and by his stripes we are healed. That we would be forgiven. So we have the way, the truth, and the life. And the reality is no man cometh unto the Father but by him. Verse number 7, If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And for henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. My, my only connection, my only true connection to God is through Jesus Christ and his word. Then he gives me his Holy Spirit. It's not something I can earn. It's not something I can elevate to. It's not something that if I try really, really hard, I can, I can attain. It's the fact that I believe in God, but I also believe in Jesus Christ. Amen. To me, I, I just, uh, it, it, is, it ultimately is a sad thing to think that most of the world believes in a God. But few believe in the way. Few believe in the truth. Few believe in the life. Because the way, the truth, and the life has been revealed from God to man, Jesus Christ. From God to man, Jesus Christ. Well, preacher, don't you know there's other holy books? Preacher, don't you know there's other religions? Go ahead, take a look at them. That's what you'll find. It is a system of man elevating himself. If I do enough or if I do something spectacular and become a martyr, I will attain. If I'm nice enough, kind enough, give enough, I will attain. There's only one system that teaches man's hopeless, man's broken. But God came down to man Amen. to redeem and fix man. Well, that's great, preacher. That's the story of 2,000 years ago. Yeah, and guess what? The truth still remains. He is still redeeming man. The sacrifice on the cross is still sufficient. The blood that was shed is still sufficient. I simply have to put my faith and trust that he died for me as well. God knows Every man, woman, child that has ever been born, ever will be born. 
And when he died upon the cross, there's an old song that says, that when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. You believe in God? Believe also in me, Jesus says. Don't miss heaven. Don't miss eternal life because you're too religious. Don't miss eternal life because though you believe in God, you do not believe that God revealed himself to man. Can I just conclude with this thought? If the reality is that man is broken, which, I mean, the evidence is pretty overwhelming. I love sometimes going online and hearing people uh, that, just, that just tell how broken religion is. And guess what? You know, there'll be like an atheist, so he'll come online and say, religion is broken. It's, it hurts people and messes people up. But I find myself going, I totally agree with you. Because man by nature is broken. No matter what group or system he's a part of, he's broken. If man, and the evidence is overwhelming historically and scientifically and biblically and, and personally that man is broken, and we believe in God, and God says, good luck. I hope you make it, even though you can't. Wow. That's not the nature of God. The nature of God was to send his own son down to earth. Not so that he could uh, simply give a system, but so that he could provide a way for broken man to be redeemed, to be fixed, to be healed, to be reconciled, the Bible says. Well, preacher, how do I do that? How do I go from broken to being fixed. Well, can, aren't, aren't you glad the price has already been paid? Amen. Jesus doesn't have to come down to earth and die for you again. He's already done it. The, the, the way has already been provided. I just got to believe it. Put my faith in it. Put my trust in it. Proclaim that I need it. God, I know I'm a sinner. I know there is no way for me to get from me to you. Death is uncrossable. Eternal life is unattainable. Heaven is beyond my reach. I have no way of going from me to you. We can say nice things at a funeral, but the only way to go from death to life is through the person of Jesus Christ. And I, as a broken man, simply said, God, I believe Jesus Christ died for me. I was a sinner. And since he died for me, I accept his payment for my sin. I ask him to forgive me of my sin. You know what God does? God didn't go, okay, fine, you can become second class. The Bible says, for those that believe on him, to them gave you power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. The Bible says we are co-heirs and co-laborers with Jesus Christ. So in other words, everything that the, all the world's religion and system is trying to do to elevate man to be like God, when Jesus came down and died for us, he did that very thing when all the other systems could not. That I am a child of God. I will spend eternity with him, my father. He is, no, he is not just my God. He is now my father. Because though I was dead in spirit when I put my faith and trust in Him and called upon Him to be my Savior, He gave me life. Guess what you call to the person that gives you life? Father. I love it when Isabella says, Daddy. Daddy. Man, I, she's, she's mine. I know God gave her life, but she's mine. And I, I'm, I'm jealous of her praise and I'm, I'm jealous of her, of her time and I'm jealous of her hugs and I'm jealous of her kisses. You know why? She's mine. We have a connection. And our, my children, with, our, their, our, with my wife and I, we have a connection that was not going to be made with anybody else. They are mine and I am theirs. And the same when I put my faith and trust in Christ. The Bible, Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. You must receive eternal life. 
And now I call him Father. Can I just say, you believe in God? I don't just believe in God. I have a Father. I don't believe just in Jesus. Can I say this respectfully? He's my brother. Spiritually, he's my brother. My sins have been forgiven. I will spend eternity in heaven. See, preacher, how do you know that? The Bible says, these things have I written unto you that believe on his name, that ye may know that you have everlasting life. The Bible doesn't teach a, a maybe so, a wonder so, try hard that you might. He says, you can know that you know that you have everlasting life because you who are broken have been redeemed and reconciled by Jesus Christ. Lord, I'm a sinner. I put my faith and trust in you to be my Savior, my God, Amen. and my Father. Amen. Ah, preacher, I don't know. Hey, can I tell you, it's nice to know your Father. It's nice to know your father. And he is my father. While the whole world believes in a God, through Jesus Christ, I have attained a father. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that you'd help us. Lord, that the truth of your word might resonate. Lord, that we might be moved by the Holy Spirit as he confirms the truth that has been declared. That belief in God is insufficient. Even the devils believe and tremble. And Jesus said, if you believe in God, believe also in me. And Lord, maybe the, the difficulty is not the belief in God. Anybody can arbitrarily believe and come up with some concept of deity that fits within the parameters of their intellect. But to believe in the scripture declared person God, man, Jesus Christ, who died upon the cross in a substitutionary fashion so that I might gain forgiveness for sins, be reconciled to my God, and attain Him to be my Father. That is not something that is earned. That is something that is given by you to those that believe. Lord, and maybe there are some here today. Lord, I don't care how long they've been in church. I don't care how long they've been religious. Lord, the question is, do they have you as a father through Jesus Christ? Have they had their sins forgiven because they put their faith and trust personally, individually, in the shed blood and finished work of Jesus Christ upon the cross and his resurrection? Lord, if they are just hoping wondering about their eternity and resting in the fact that they believe in God. Lord, would you declare to them that that is insufficient? They are still yet broken and they only can be redeemed by belief in the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ. Lord, may they see their need for a Savior. May they desire to have their sins forgiven, be born again, so that they might know you as Father. I pray that you'd help us. With heads bowed and eyes closed.